Welcome back to the workshop, guys. I'm Kyle, joined with Josh here. Hey, guys. So today, we've got a fun one for you. I wanted to put Josh's knowledge to the test. He's the man that started the workshop, this YouTube channel, and he knows, obviously, a lot about sharpening knives, but can he tell by looking at a knife what sharpener the knife was sharpened on? All right, guys, so as I said on the front end, we've sharpened six different knives here, and I'm gonna put Josh's knowledge to the test, if he can tell which sharpener each of these was sharpened on. Well, you've got these numbered from number one to number six. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll kind of walk through some of what I would look at, and I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to tell if these knives are actually, which which method you use to sharpen these. So on number one here, I'm actually seeing a little bit of a, of a burr. Oh, it's flaking off, even just with my finger there. Um, a little bit rough, so I'm not entirely sure what that is. Maybe it's just that burr on there. I'm gonna feel. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty sharp. They all should be sharp. They're all sharp. <laughs> but I'm seeing a. I'm seeing a scratch pattern that's. Uh, it's kind of angled here, so I'm. I'm gonna guess that that's a. That's a by hand sharpening, and because there's still a burr left on there. I would have to guess that this is a, oh, I'm second guessing now. Uh-oh. Well, I'm pretty sure this is a diamond, but I don't know if it's precision adjust or bench stone. What do you think that? The reason I'm leaning towards precision adjust is because this transition at the top of the bevel is really clean. And on a freehand system, there's gonna be some variability mm -hmm. at each stroke, which is gonna make that, that transition point from the bevel to the primary less clean. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty clean. Man, for the first one, I'm, I'm gonna have to say this is sharper on the precision adjust. You got it. Nailed it, dude. Awesome. <laughs> well done. I didn't think that was gonna go as, as easily, but... Uh... <laughs> Good job, Ben. I thought the dead giveaway on that one was gonna be that the... Uh, I always seem to leave a little tiny bit of burr with the precision adjust when I'm using it. I mean, you have the leather with the Elite package to be able mm -hmm. to knock that off, but it always seems to be like a little tiny burr left over, and I thought that was gonna be a dead giveaway, hmm. which normally falls off when you start using the knife, but I never used it, I just sharpened it and set it down, so. Mm -hmm. So here's the picture under the digital microscope of the precision adjust edge. Um, obviously, you can see those burrs I was talking about. Was yep. there anything surprising to you about it? Not really, I mean, we're seeing the kind of angled scratch pattern, like you might be coming across the you know, at a little bit of an angle, you're not drawing perfectly perpendicular to the edge. Uh, pretty typical kind of that. We've done a video on this too, that, like that push sweep or that pull sweep method. He is good. Um, <laughs> and then a, you know, just a super clean transition from the bevel to the primary. Yep. Pretty Nailed clear. It, awesome. Right. Knife number two. I feel like I got a little bit lucky or that might be one of the easiest ones to... So who knows if this is going to be right, but... This has a shorter bevel, which might mean it's sharpened at a steeper angle. So instead of 20 degrees, maybe it's sharpened at 25 degrees. Um, it's also a pretty clean line, and I'm not seeing a defined... Actually, you know, it's kind of... A, I'll describe it this way, and I have no idea what this actually looks like under the digital microscope, but it almost looks like a knurled texture hmm. that you would see, um, you know, like on... Uh, like you picture the end of like a... A uh, socket, like a, a socket wrench or ratchet, it's kind of got that textured yeah. metal on there. Yeah. Like it barely looks like that, which kind of makes me think that it's more like this stamped in texture, like the skew wheel that's rolling through that that diamond skew wheel. That's all I've got though to go off of. How'd I do? Nailed it, dude. Sweet. Two for two, you guys. This guy knows his stuff, man. Um, let's take a look at it a little bit closer under the digital microscope. Here's a picture of the pull through knife sharpener under the digital microscope. Anything stand out to you in particular? Yeah, we're seeing some of that same, so that like, I call it knurled texture, or just like that matted texture. Um, it's way, it's not shiny. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a more matte finish there. Um, it's got a pretty clean edge, and uh, and a decent transition to the the bevel. I think I was seeing a little bit of that with my eye there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's what I was most surprised about when I went to take a picture of it was just how clean the transition is between. Mm -hmm the bevel and then into the um, edge of the knife. Like it looks, it almost looks precision adjust like, like it's that uh -huh. clean, which surprised me. I didn't think that would be the case with a wheel. Knife number three. This 
I am pretty certain is the whetstone. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty shiny. I'm not seeing a, a scratch pattern that's really standing out to the naked eye. And I wish I could compare with all the others, but uh, I'm not seeing anything that would tell me that this is not sharpened on the whetstone. I know the belt on that Professional Electric is a little bit more coarse, and so mm. it won't produce an edge that looks this fine. It's still going to be sharp, but it's not going to look this fine. I'm going with whetstone. Benchstone. But benchstone. You're close. I think all the things that you said still apply. It's just the benchstone. Yeah, you finished that out on the on the ceramic plate I did. there. Yep. yep. Yeah, that does a really nice job of polishing up that edge. I'm curious now to see what the whetstone looks like, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at this under the all right. under the microscope. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty clean. Like, uh, you know, you're not seeing a deep scratch pattern there, uh, and nice work on the. On yeah. the transition, that's really clean. Uh, even cleaner than the, what we just saw with the with the skew wheel. Um, yeah, really nothing that stands out in a in a bad way. It's actually it looks a little more matted in this photo, but that might mm -hmm. just be the photo. I know the lighting can be tricky. Let's look at knife number four. This, okay. What I'm seeing is like more of a satin type of texture on here, uh, which I'm familiar with seeing from a power sharpener. I was gonna be, I was gonna be so certain, and uh, I'm also looking at the bevel height and the transition, which are pretty clean. And on a convex edge, which is what our power sharpeners do, it's gonna be a little less clean for the transition. Right. Oh, I am seeing some striation pattern, which is pretty consistently going up, uh, you know, barely angled and away from the. The cutting edge so that pushes me back a little bit to uh this is likely sharpen on a powered sharpener it doesn't feel like it's got ultimate sharpness which you know, it's sharp but it's it's tearing a little bit there <clears throat> which is pushing me back i'm kind of stumped <laughs> uh, mostly because i would say that sharpening on a whetstone is a challenge so maybe there's going to be some I know our powered sharpeners are pretty foolproof. They'll get you a sharp edge regardless. Sharpening on a whetstone is a bit more of a labor of love. And so I'm wondering, you know, how sharp did you get this? How much time did you spend? I have to stick with a powered sharpener, I think. I'm gonna go with the Kitchen Electric. So, free analysis. Uh, my most difficult sharpener to use is the whetstone. And all of the analysis you put to it is exactly right. Mm. I did spend a lot of time on it. I'll be honest, I'm just not great on a whetstone. You saw my diamond stone skills, <laughs> the whetstone. They were good. It, yeah. it, uh, it was a little more difficult for me, um, but that's the whetstone. All right. Um, yeah, I think if you pull it up on the on yep. the microscope, we'll see, but a really consistent scratch pattern. Um, you know, you're not scrubbing all over the place, but yeah, like it looks like a beautiful, a beautiful consistent edge. Again, your transition is, is really clean. So nice work holding us the same angle throughout sharpening. Uh, part of me wonders if uh, if potentially the angle on the knife, I mean, the angle guides on the whetstone are set 17. 17 is what so, I was at on that one. Yeah, uh, I wonder if uh, it just would have taken a lot more time to get to uh, an incredibly sharp edge. You probably hit the edge a little bit. Obviously you're more slicing paper, it's a sharp knife. You know, All true. Um, I would say from when I went to, got done sharpening it to refinement, if I'd have done anything different, it would have just been spending a little more time refining the edge, spending hmm. a little more time on that on that fine grit to just get it to where it was slicey sharp. It's sharp. I mean, it's yeah. probably more yep. of a toothy edge is what you've got right now than a razor sharp edge. Yep. But. Knife number five. I think this one is the is the electric kitchen knife sharpener with the abrasive discs. What tells you that? So. I know that that also uses a ceramic skew wheel to hone the edge. And this looks like there's the scratch pattern from the disc, but then it's maybe shaved down or flattened a little bit by the the ceramic disc. Is it just Yeah, the... oh, I can yeah, I can totally see it. The way that the scratch pattern is here at the heel, which I know is that disc rotating here and compared to where it's at in the center and where it's at at the front for where you're coming out of it. I mean, there the scratches the are going this way and the scratches are going this way, mm. which I would believe is very different than if it was the belt, it's gonna be all all consistent there. Feels like not entirely fair to say because it's not really anything about the edge, but based on what I'm seeing, based on what I'm 
Yeah, Healy. Very sharp. I think that's the electric kitchen knife sharpener. Nailed it, man. Yep, you can definitely see the some of the scratches there mm -hmm. up on the blade face. I mean, just like barely just above the bevel. I can't see that nearly as well. I would have thought that this would throw you off for like a free hand just because that transition mm -hmm. to the to the edge looks like it could have been created from me to the naked eye either not being as consistent yep. in my angle. Yeah, I mean, when you come down to the edge, really clean. Um, you see that extra little bit of like, it's just a little darker right there on the edge. I think that's that skew wheel just hitting it yep. to knock off the edge there. All right, well, process of elimination. <clears throat> Let's see, who knows what this could be. <laughs> what are you seeing on that? Yeah, this looks so consistently like our belt sharpeners. You know, the way that professional electric knife sharpener works is the blade runs through, there's a belt that runs down, and you pull across that belt so it's always perpendicular. Um, I can see that pretty clearly. You know, it's it's fairly clean, potentially cleaner than I than I thought, but uh, it's just a little bit of like a roll onto the onto the primary. Which is which natural is exactly with what the you convex. Think. Yep, with a convex edge. Um, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's not just this V and the grind stops it, it wraps up a little bit. Helps make the knife feel maybe a little uh, slicier, kind of removes the, the shoulder of that transition. Yep. Looks really nice. Yep. Nailed it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you did Process really, of elimination. Really good on uh, through them all. Uh, you mentioned this in the beginning that the way that the professional electric sharpener hones the knife or refines the edge after it kind of sets that initial edge is by reducing the speed of the belt. Mm -hmm. And so you're still left with a, uh, with this with his medium grit belt on there. But if you reduce the speed, you're also reducing the pressure on the knife. And so uh, in essence, you know, these chunks of abrasive don't dig in as deep. They stay more on the surface as they grind the, the metal of the knife. And so it polishes the edge, removes the burr, but you still get this same like striation scratch pattern um, that doesn't go away like it does with some of the other sharpeners when you use a ceramic hone or um, yeah, even the whetstone, which uses a finer, you know, the, a very fine 6,000 right. grit stone to, to remove that edge. Yeah. So this is, it's just very clear. It's a nice satin edge. Uh, mm -hmm. looks, looks good with the naked eye. You can see it definitely comes up a little bit past the shoulder or grinds that shoulder down a little bit. Yep. Uh, typical convex edge. Um, I, I don't see much of that with the naked eye, but there's a little bit of it that comes up. Yep. And this is just another thing for our viewers is this is the closest to what a factory edge is going to look mm -hmm. like as well. So when it leaves the factory, they're usually sharpened in a similar fashion. So closest thing you can probably get to a factory edge on a knife. Yep. It's a belt, flexible belt, um, really similar to the same process. Yep. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap up this video. A few takeaways that I had just on the sharpening into things that I thought was interesting. Um, it was cool to look under the microscope and see the difference between a convex edge and a flat grind. Um, especially when it comes to the flat grind when you're doing it by hand versus a fixed angle system. So it got me thinking like, it might be kind of fun down the road to like compare edge types when it comes flat, convex, we could even look at hollow ground mm -hmm. knives and that might be a fun one down to, to do down the road. So if you guys are interested in that, leave a comment down below. Maybe we can look at that under the digital microscope. That was what came to mind as I was sharpening these. What takeaways did you have from it there, Josh? Yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can sharpen a knife. And obviously we cover a lot of that in like in this video or in all of our videos, basically that's all we talk about. But uh, I think uh, regardless of how many ways you can sharpen a knife, you, you can get to a sharp knife each, each way you want to approach it. Mm -hmm. uh, these abrasives are removing material. They're restoring a sharp edge. And uh, there's an entire level of, of nerdiness that you can dive into about your knife edge. And I'm sure I'm only scratching the surface. There's a few of you out there who go way deeper than, than I have ever gone. And, uh, just a fun, a fun journey and something to keep an eye on. If you're, if you're sharpening your kitchen knives or pocket knives and you know, want to dive into the nitty gritty details. Uh, each of these was sharpened, I guess, with a few exceptions, uh, on our uh, new kitchen line of products. Uh, the exception being, our bench stone and the precision adjust, but uh, check those out. They're newer for us. Uh, great tools to sharpen every knife in your kitchen. They're available at worksharptools.com. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.